Okay, can you all see my slide, my presentation? Yeah. Please. Um, is my background in the right direction? I think it was designed for the Northern oh, Hemisphere. Okay. Yes. You can start to speak. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm going to be talking about the development of uh, Candidatus Libribacter Africanus, specific LAMP and PCR. Um, Wong Lung Bing is a serious disease of citrus, and I really need to thank Leandro for um, giving such a good background. It's made it a lot easier for myself. Um, it's transmitted by uh, the Diaphorina citri, and it's caused, the most serious version is caused by uh, Candidatus libribacter asiaticus or less. Now in South Africa, uh, Wang Long Bing or Afri African citrus greening, as we prefer, prefer to call it, so that we can differentiate between the two diseases, is associated not with LAS, but with LAF or Libribacter africanus. Um, naturally, it is spread by Troza erythrea um, rather than Diaphorina uh, citri, but uh, experimentally, uh, either vector can transmit the other bacteria. Um, fortunately, the African citrus greening uh, disease is heat sensitive, and the symptoms are a lot milder than that uh, induced by LAS. Um, citrus greening has also been known in South Africa since the 1920s, and our industry has had very good success in controlling this disease through controlling the psyllid and through um, cutting out infected branches. Leandro showed this. Um, the LAS uh, bacteria is far more widely distributed through the world and it uh, causes the much more serious disease, whereas Candida Candidatus libribacter africanus is really just found on the African continent. Now, what complicates the situation for us in South Africa and possibly in the rest of Africa, this may also be the case, is that Citrus africanus has a number of subspecies which occur on indigenous members of the Rutaceae. And uh, I'm showing a, a, a dendrogram here where you can see the different subspecies um, uh, based on their uh, outer membrane protein sequence. Now these subspecies are named after the original tree host from where we isolated them. So Capensis, Pridus, Xanthozyli, and Teclia were found um, on uh, respectively Caledendrum capensis. Um, this beautiful tree is also a member of the Rutaceae. Uh, on Clausinia anisata, Deprus lanceolata, and Xanthoma xylem capensis, and then on Teclia and Orishia. So four of these five indigenous rutaceous trees are also hosts to Triosa erythrea. And the fact that the bacteria occurs on these means that they could potentially be transmitted to citrus. However, we've only actually detected Libribacter africanus senso stricto, so none of the subspecies in commercial citrus in South Africa. We've only found these five subspecies. And interestingly enough, just about every one of them appears to be restricted to only the specific indigenous uh, member of the rutaceae from which they were originally uh, isolated. Now, um, in spite of this, we had a situation in 2016 where there were reports that Libribacter asiaticus had, had infected uh, Tanzania. And um, when we further uh, studied this, uh, um, this report, we had managed to get samples from there and we could show that it was actually not Libribacter asiaticus, but it was actually Libribacter africanus subspecies Clausiniae. 
Um, now, our version of Clausinia does not occur on citrus. It doesn't seem to be able to be transmitted to citrus. However, the version up in East Africa was found on citrus. Um, as there are no whole genome sequences, we're not dead sure if the two, how closely related the two actually are. So having all these subspecies around needs, means that when we want to detect the virus, we have to be dead sure of what we are detecting. So did I say virus? I meant bacteria. Um, we need to ensure that any lamp that we design would detect LAF, but not detect LAS, LAM, uh, that's Librobacter asiaticus or Americanus, and also not the LAF clausinia version that's found in citrus or biovar citrus as it's known. Um, and then also preferably, we would prefer it if it didn't detect the other citrus uh, subspecies, the other Africanus subspecies. So to develop the lamp, we um, aligned the whole genome sequences of uh, LAS, LAF, and LAM. Uh, there was no whole genome sequence. There's still no whole genome sequence available of LAF CL biovar citrus. And then we designed primers, uh, lamp primers based on, on uh, areas that differ. We designed a set to the gyrase subunit B gene um, of LAF. Unfortunately, uh, in spite of its um, theoretical inability to detect LAS and LAM, it did actually uh, react against these two bacteria as well. So this non-target amplification means that this particular lamp was of little use. We also started with the colorimetric lamps as this would be the ideal uh, technique to use in the field. The second gene to which we had designed primers was the uh, EFTU gene. Um, and this showed much greater promise. It, it reacted only against the LAF, uh, but not against LAF, uh, LAS or LAM. Um, however, unfortunately, the, the reaction is very slow. Um, it, it, it really takes a long time before the reaction differentiates between LAS and the other two. So we converted the LAMP system to a real-time system, which worked very nicely. Here you can see the reaction, the amplification curves of LAF, as opposed to the healthy control and the buffer control. Now to determine its specificity, we had to recollect um, the LAF subspecies, as um, I had moved laboratory and the uh, original isolates had um, gotten lost. So um, we retested these with generic Libribacter primers. There's a real-time PCR that detects all, all known Libribacter species. And then there's a very good endpoint PCR system with the A2J primers that was designed in 1999 already. Um, these confirmed the presence of Libribacters in these indigenous plants. And then we designed primers which would flank the lamp uh, primers to ensure that we could generate sequence data to this area. Once again, these reacted with a large number of the um, indigenous uh, LAF subspecies. But when we used the, um, when we tested the real-time system, you can see these, these purple lines and the red lines are the amplification um, curves of LAS. But unfortunately, you can see that these two uh, amplification curves represent those of LAF uh, clausiniae. So in fact, the, the clausiniae is detected better than LAF in our system, or it had a higher concentration in the indigenous plants. Either way, we were unable to differentiate the two. So um, we decided to also develop a, 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 a endpoint PCR because the lamp also was not consistent. We would find great inconsistency amongst the replicates 
um, of our tests. And we couldn't improve this even by changing the ratios of the outer and inner primers to, we tried various combinations, um, or the primer concentrations. We just couldn't get the, the consistency uh, up to acceptable levels. So we don't consider the lamp as a very successful uh, detection method. So we have gone ahead and developed a multiplex PCR, which can differentiate between LAS, LAF, LAM, and all the um, LAF subspecies. This was based on the outer membrane protein gene. Uh, we designed these primers, um, and we could show that they detect and differentiate the different subspecies very nicely. We've tried them in duplex and in simplex, uh, in triplex uh, format. Um, and for, in most instances, they work very nicely. We confirmed through validating the system that they detect only LAF and not uh, the more closely related subspecies that we had detected. So to conclude, um, the LAMP system development was not a roaring success, but we do have a LAF specific PCR system, which we do recommend for routine use. Um, we do not have a isolate of the LAF CL Biovar citrus, which is found in East Africa, but we do recommend that this particular system, um, our PCR system, gets tested against this isolate as well to ensure that it doesn't detect that. Thank you for your attention and we gratefully acknowledge the funding of the European Union Horizon 2020 Research and Innovation Program. Thank you.